Hi, for this video, what I want to do is show you how to find the margin of error in a Z interval. So when you're finding confidence intervals, it's really important to understand what the margin of error is. And the margin of error is simply the distance from your point estimate to your two endpoints of your confidence interval. So for the Z interval, the formula that we use to calculate the margin of error is the error is equal to the Z score that corresponds to your level of confidence times the population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. So I went ahead and put both of the symbols that I have seen in textbooks that I have taught from. So the, the textbook that I am currently teaching from uses Z sub C. Uh, the textbook that I last taught from used Z, um, used Z star, and it's possible that your textbook could use something different. So just know that different textbooks have different uh, symbols that they use to represent the same thing. So for this, like I said, the Z score, ZC or Z star is just a Z score that corresponds to the level of confidence. And Technically, what is happening with the confidence level is that it is centered in the normal curve, and then you're just trying to figure out what is the z-score that corresponds to that area in between. Okay, um, You can use either a table or technology to find your z-score. I personally like to use the t-table rather than the z-table just because it's easier, but you can always use a normal table. Um, I do have videos that show how to use a normal table to find um, the critical value, and I also have videos that show how to use both the TI-84 and the TI-Inspire to find those z-scores as well. All right, so let's look at an example. We are going to find the margin of error for a population given the following levels of confidence. And we are given that the population standard deviation is 2.3 and the sample size is 30. You cannot use this formula if you know S, the sample standard deviation. Uh, so if you are given the sample standard deviation, then you would have to use the formula for the T interval rather than the Z interval. So for this, all we're going to do is we're going to set up our formula. And E is equal to ZC times sigma divided by the square root of N. So we already know the sigma and the square root of N, so we can plug those in. So what we have to do is we have to find our ZC. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up a table. Um, this is the table that I use in the text that I'm currently teaching from. It's table five in my textbook. So those of you that are my students right now, you would just use table five. Uh, we haven't used this one yet in class. So this is a new one for you. So with this one, what we're going to do is because we're looking for 95% confidence, we would just come to our level of confidence, which is 0.95. And then we would use that column. So we're going to go down this column here all the way to the bottom row. The infinity row down here is the normal table. So this is the value that we would use. So we just went all the way down that row until we got to the 1.96. So we would just plug in 1.96 times 2.3 divided by the square root of 30. And then we would just plug this into our calculator and we get approximately 0 0.823. Okay, so with 95% confidence, this would be our margin of error. So if we were actually finding the confidence interval, we would just take our point estimate and we would subtract this value to get the lower limit and we would add this value to get the upper limit. All right, so let's look at another example and we'll compare the two values. So for this one, what we have is we still are using the exact same formula. The only thing that changes is our z-score. So for this one, what we are going to do is now we're going to look for 90% confidence. So let me go ahead and pull up my table. So this time, we would be using the 90% confidence. So we would be using the second column. And again, we would just go to the bottom row. And our z-score our, our that we would use is 1.645. So I would just put in 1.645 times 2.3 divided by the square root of 30. And with this, we would end up with approximately 0.691. So if you notice that the margin of error is going to be larger for um, 
a larger level of confidence or a higher level of confidence, and it's going to be smaller for a um, lower level of confidence. So 90% confidence would give us a smaller uh, margin of error, which means that our interval would be a smaller estimate. This one would give us a larger value. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you would like me to cover, please let me know that as well.